Hi, it's Philly from Sweet Starling and I am in the mood for Halloween. So from now on, it's pretty much Halloween until Halloween. Today I'm gonna to show you how to make black bat toffee apples. And they're so awesome, they're really cute, but they're also very stylish. And this method will work for any dark color you want. So if you want a dark purple, a dark red, a dark blue, a dark green, any, any dark color that you want. I can't list all the colors, but if it's a dark, dark color, this method will work really, really well. Now there is a link below which will take you to the blog post which has got the full recipe and instructions which you can print out and keep for yourself. They've got a free Halloween ebook out as well which you can get just by signing up to my newsletter. The link to that is below. They are very cute little miniature pumpkin cakes made of pumpkin spice cake and what else and cinnamon buttercream. So they're insane and they're also beautiful to look at. And you get it completely for free just for signing up to a newsletter. And a newsletter is only ever my tutorials and recipes going out to you. It's never any rubbish you Fun stuff, fun stuff. So sign up to that and the ebook will be delivered straight to your inbox and plenty of time for Halloween. Before you start anything, you need to give your apples a good clean. The apples you buy, especially in the supermarket, tend to have like a waxy coating on them. If that's not cleaned off at all, the caramel can actually just slide off your apple pretty much. So it'll just sort of move down overnight once it's dipped or throughout the day and it will be nudity by the time the morning comes or just a bit patchy, which isn't very appetizing on a toffee apple. So give it a really good wash. I washed mine, like really scrubbed them with a sponge and to be honest, they still didn't feel like they were unwaxed. They just lost some of their that fake shine that they have. So to make bat toffee apples, you need to start off by making the little bat features before you get to the apples because the bat features need time to dry. So by bat features, I mean eyes, fangs, little ears if you want them and the wings, of course. Well, I feel like bats don't do that. The bats do. <laughs> bat don't they? <laughs> So does an eagle, so does a dragon. So you need flower paste to cut out the features. It is very important you do use flower paste or gum paste even uh, because you need to roll these so it's really thin. They want to be light and they want to be very, very dry before you use them. So for the eyes, you need little small ovals of white and then even tinier ovals of black inside them. For those I've just used PME oval cutters, I will link to those in my blog post as well. I'll link to all the cutters and everything you need in my blog post, so click through to that afterwards. For the fangs, I am using diamond cutters, so cutting out six diamonds and then cutting each of those in half, so I've got two fangs for each apple. For the ears, I'm using a larger size diamond cutter and again cutting it in half. And then for the wings, I've drawn my own little back wing template. You can either print one out. If I can, I'll try and put my, my back wing template into the blog post. I think I should be able to do that, right? Not sure. I can't promise. I'm, I'm going to try to and we'll see how it goes. If I can't, Google bat wing or something, or cartoon bat, trace it. And it needs to be little though. If you go too big, like you can't have these huge, great big wings coming off your apples because they're just not gonna hold. You need tiny wings, because it still shows it's a bat. They're just more likely to hold up. So this recipe is going to be enough to cover six apples. So you need six pairs of everything. Six pairs of ears, six pairs of eyes, six pairs of fangs, and six pairs of wings. Leave those to dry, ideally overnight if you have time, otherwise, you could potentially make these bits in the morning and then make your apples in the evening and your bits that you've made in the morning should be dry enough by the time you start to come and do your apples. If you make these bits immediately and then move straight onto your apples, they're probably not gonna hold very well, especially the wings. Now your apples, the fun bit, you need lollipop sticks or skewers, something to hold your apples up, obviously for people to eat them and for you to dip them as well. So I've got lollipop sticks and I'm just inserting a lolly stick into each apple. It does take a bit of force, but they will go. Skewers are probably easier to push in because there's no flex, so whereas lollipop sticks do have a bit of bend. To make the actual um, caramel, I suppose, it goes around the side, it's more like a, it's caramel, but it's a really hard caramel. These apples are not soft and chewy. The toffee apples I know are break your teeth hard. That's that's just the ones you get, like you get them at fun fairs and you get them at Halloween, obviously, which is why we're even here. But they're very, very hard. You worry for your teeth when you bite into them. That's, this is that kind of toffee apple. So don't expect it to be some soft, sticky caramel on the outside. Like you could hurt someone with it. It's that kind of caramel. Don't hurt someone with it. They're supposed to be nice and enjoyable. Eat it yourself. Just be careful of the teeth. So the way to make these apples is to mix water, sugar, corn syrup and some flavouring if you want it. You don't actually need any flavour if you don't want it because sugar, water and corn syrup taste pretty good anyway. It's just sugar isn't it? It's just a very sweet coating to an apple. But if you want to add some flavour you can. Very popular one to add is vanilla obviously because it's not over imposing. I've actually added some caramel into this to make like really caramel caramel apples. 
start by mixing your water, sugar and corn syrup together in a saucepan and then bring it to the boil. I do stir this as well. I know there's a thing about when you're making caramel especially you shouldn't be stirring but I, I stir everything. I can't help myself, I want to see what's going on. So once it's boiling you need to use a sugar thermometer or a candy thermometer. Very, very important because you need to check when it's getting to the right temperature. There are other ways of checking like that you can uh, drop caramel into ice water and see whether it's soft ball, hard ball, soft crack, hard crack, things like that. That's a bit beyond me. If you know how to do that, then by all means do. If you don't, get yourself a sugar thermometer. So hard crack, we are looking just under 150 degrees C and about 300 degrees F. So it's very, very hot and it actually takes a really long time to get there. I thought this was going to be a 10 minute thing. It wasn't at all. It was probably, oh, it's probably more of like a half hour thing that I was on Instagram whilst it was happening. Boring waiting for that. But just be patient, let it get to the right temperature. When it reaches hard crack temperature, take it off the heat, add your flavouring, add your colour. For my apples, obviously, I've added black, so it's quite a good chunk of sugar flare black paste colour. It's actually called licorice, but it's the, the black one. And you need to stir that through as quickly as you can, get the flavour and the colour mixed through. As soon as this caramel comes off the heat, it's going to start to thicken up gradually. So it'll be, it will be okay for a few minutes, but it, all the time you're taking to stir a colour through, it's going to be firming up a little bit. So get that mixed through, and then you want to start on your apples. Now before you dip your apples, you want to have a sheet of wax paper, ideally, ready, or grease proof, something sprayed with cooking spray so it doesn't stick, or so it's as least likely to stick as possible. I've used wax paper and sprayed it with cookie spray, so there's no way they were sticking. Lined my apples up next to my pan, tilted my pan sideways, and then rolled my apples through it. Now, I've spent some time at the beginning here trying to strip them off and get them so they had nice neat bottoms. My caramel thickened up while I started doing that, so don't worry about it. Don't waste your time. I actually prefer the ones which had a nice big drizzle of caramel underneath because it just looks better. It looks how, like toffee apples do, don't they? They have like a, a puddle of under, and actually it's quite a fun bit. You just get to eat the, the caramel and forget the apple inside. So don't worry about getting drips away. Just dip, make sure it's coated. You can let, if there's loads of it running off, let that run up a little bit over the pan and then put that onto your wax paper. Now the other thing you can add when you're adding your flavour and your colour is a very small amount of trex, so like half a teaspoon amount or shortening. I read that if you add that, it prevents um, the bubbles from forming. I don't know if you've ever made toffee apples before, sometimes you get bubbles all over them. And those bubbles, at first, they're kind of okay, they just look a bit textured, but if you leave them overnight, for instance, the bubbles open up and just leave holes through to your apples, so they don't look as nice. But adding the trex is supposed to stop the bubbles from forming, and actually it works really well. I did have two that came out with a couple of bubbles on, but the rest of them were really nice and smooth and glossy, so I think the trex is a good, is a good tip. So once you've dipped an apple, you want to work very quickly, as quickly as you can, and try and stick your extra bits, so your wings, into the side of the apple. This caramel will set so, so fast. If you can't get it all on, don't worry, but if you can work really quickly, you can push the wings in, push the ears on, push the eyes on, push the bangs on, before the caramel is completely set. If it has completely set, don't worry about it. Don't waste time trying to get those bits stuck on all the while your pot of caramel is burning out. Just ignore those bits and dip the rest of your apples because at the end, if you have got bits that haven't stuck, I had a combination, some of my bits stuck really well, some of them didn't stick at all, and like the eyes were dropping off and stuff. So at the end, you can use the caramel you've got left over and you can either, if, say if it's ears or the wings, you can dip just the bottom edge in the caramel and then stick them onto your apple or dip the ends of the wings in the caramel and stick them onto the sides of your apple. If it's more tiny things like the fangs and the uh, eyes, you can use something like a cocktail stick or a scribe just to pick up a tiny bit of caramel, put it on the back of them and then stick them on. Just be so careful when you're doing that because this is so, I can't even explain how hot it is. It's so, so hot, it will burn, it will blister, it'll be horrible, so just don't burn yourselves. So once you've added all your bits, you should have some very nice, glossy, black bat toffee apples. Now these are best on the day that they are made. I left mine overnight and the texture changed. They weren't as glossy and like silky and black. They kind of went, um, they went more matte and almost like a little bit mottled. And actually it was a really nice effect and it worked amazingly well for bats. But if you're wanting the glossy ones that are shown in the picture, that mottled effect isn't going to do it for you. So if you want the glossiness, you're going to have to make them the day that you need them. If you're happy with the more matte mottledness, then you can use them the day after. So that is how to make black bat toffee apples. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and click that subscribe button. There'll be brand new videos every single Monday. And the next few will be Halloween.